The energy bills in the UK mm -hmm. have gone up because of our green policies. Oh, OK. That's just that there. <laughs> <laughs> the, <laughs> the green policies of the Conservative fuck off. So, Jacob Rees-Mogg and the Conservative in general uh, have started taking on Trumpian politics a few uh, like a few years ago. Uh, they invited Steve Bannon over uh, to see how they could learn from the Trump victory, how they can apply culture war stuff in America and the, the kind of uh, populism that Trump brought to the Conservative Party. So you saw Liz Tr Truss saying that lefty economists are the reason that her uh, economic plan didn't work out. Uh, you had Jacob Rees-Mogg at the Conservative Party conference uh, saying that Owen Jones was fake news. Um, it, it's just, it's so fucking see-through. Um, but it's it's called out, har it's hardly ever called out by journalists and when these ministers go on TV or or even when uh, when when they do like live journalism things, it's it's incredible to watch how flustered um, journalists will get with this common tactic that's applied every time. And it seems like none of them are prepared to say like, "Are you like are are you Trump now?" You know, like they haven't found an adequate defense for it yet. Um, I mean, largely because a lot of. Uh, um, a lot of journalists are very like sheltered in their understanding of of uh, of of debate and like these nonsense tactics, uh, so they fall privy to them. Um, but for once, uh, for once that did not happen, uh, and we have uh, Mooner Perkis here. Well, so we're because our this. employment rights all predate the European this Union by and large. I, the culture wars really exist? Do you think they're essentially a, a right-wing... Oh, no, I, um, think, I think they exist because people like you and your party and government, they desperately need them to exist because what else are you going to win the next election on? So um, they're not coming from people who want to pull roads down Perfect. or want to edit Raoul Dahl. Isn't mm. there a battle of ideas that is going on that sometimes get expressed in extreme form? So what I think has happened is it's a distraction technique. So don't get me wrong, I think... Any calls to rewrite Roald Dahl, for example, or to rename a, a street. By the way, the street renaming, if we go into that, it was called Black Boy Lane. You know, that was why they renamed the street. I think that's fair enough. If you had a street named, you know, White Trash, you might want to rename it. But I think what's happening here is you're drawing attention to these things that actually don't impact people's lives. And the reason yep. you're doing that is because otherwise people might just focus on the real grievances in their life. Yeah. Jake, Jacob Rees-Mogg, as a politician in the Conservative Party, has genuine power to affect people's lives, has genuine power to make them better or worse. So to bring up this culture war bullshit and it is, is a distraction for the fact that he has chosen to change people's lives. He's chosen to make it shittier for them. Which are basically caused oh, by your government. Perfect. But doesn't no platforming actually affect people's lives because freedom of speech... Notice there, your government... Like, she, she points directly, your government is affecting people's lives. And he's like, oh, doesn't this thing actually affect people's lives? No, no, not in a real way, not in a real way that your government does. But he very smoothly went by it. This is why he's such a sleazy fucker. Like, when he's facing any criticism, he can weasel out of it like a greased rabbit. You know? It's absolutely greased essential weasel. for the no. political discussion that we're going Jacob, to have. Jacob, do you know what really impacts people's lives? And I really would just ask your Jeez, viewers just back. to... Perfect. You probably dislike me if you know who I am. But just ask you, your viewers to think about what really impacts their life. Is it Roll Dahl being rewritten? Which, by the way, I don't think it should be. Is it the renaming of a street? Is it, I don't know, some woke policy? Is that really what's harming people? Or is it the concern that they are going to be waiting for an ambulance and dying? Is it the concern but, that their children are getting a poor education? Is it the concern that we've got the highest energy bills but isn't this in why, the, on the planet? But isn't this why you should stand up for freedom of speech? Because no. if you attack... See? Again, for, for moments there, he was like, oh, fuck, she's calling it. She's fucking calling it. And he's like, oh, but, but freedom of speech, freedom of speech. No, no, no. Free, freedom of speech is 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 the thing not like starving not like having no money because our energy bills have gone up freedom of speech in some areas no, you're that then putting the government diversion. in control Jacob, of Mr. the agenda Mr. you're freedom. deciding Mr. politicians freedom. should really Mr. Good at freedom it. of speech here did you or did you not vote to stop people protesting if it was annoying unfortunately so she's she's done really well but this whole like freedom of speech her going along with his framing 
is making it easier for him. You know what I mean? Because the whole the whole point of diversion is to stop talking about what was ever going on there. And now they are talking about something else. So it was sort of successful, you know? Well, there are limits on protest. But, uh, okay. but, but, but so public free protest speech, so long is, as I'm okay with it. No, public protest is a very important part of freedom of speech. And the laws that have been introduced right. are, are to get the balance right between people okay. going no, about no, their daily lives. So that's perfect. You tell me how you know? freedom of speech is going to make people's lives better in this country after it's been decimated by things because, like your Brexit. Because it's really important, because it allows you to come on this programme and make your case. Uh, uh, and this that once you... Sorry, me making my case on this programme, yes, which I'll, that's never, which I'll never come back... Her, her making her case makes no fucking difference to the actual policies that have been enacted. He, it's such a bullshit false equivalence. So because someone makes a case on a right-wing news broadcast, that's the same as you actually enacting real laws to suppress protest. I don't fucking think so. He has real power, and this weaselly way of comparing it to dissent and having real power is just... It's just typically what he does, and it's what he's been training to do his whole life because the conservatives, their whole goal is to fuck you over and then distract you from the fact that they just fucked you over again and again and again they take your rights away and then they say oh but you have free speech they they take away your uh they, they take away workers rights and then they say oh but oh but like what is a woman though what is a woman oh oh what's going on there just just moving it away and the, the whole um, like it's the the whole reason that the conservatives like attack trans people is not because they actually give a shit about trans people, or it's because they want to distract from the stuff that they're doing, and they know that people get worked up about it. It's just you just turn up that hate dial, and people get distracted from. Oh fuck! Wait, I'm not allowed to protest the government anymore. But oh wait, what was that he was saying? Oh yes, I'm angry about that thing, and they do it again and again, and it's it's what they will always fucking do. And it's, it's also why it's so, there are so many tools at their disposal to distract people and make them think about things. Like the uh, immigration is an example, like boats coming over. The more pages and articles that are dedicated to the conservatives' awful treatment of immigrants, the less is dedicated to attacking their their um their ability to help the country. The less that is dedicated to attacking the the things that the conservatives have failed on the even even having a discussion about how this should not be a discussion gets in the way of the real the real issues going on like uh child starvation is way up in britain there's something to talk about oh no but they're oh but they've, they've got these schools in birmingham where they're secretly they're secretly uh planning terrorism and it's like no a that's not happening but you're like <laughs> People, children are starving. Like, the distraction tactic, even as I'm, like, giving it as an example, it's so easy to get frustrated by that. You know what I mean? And this is this is all the conservatives do. It's all they've ever done. Uh, under Margaret Thatcher, Britain's uh, economy was way worse off, but... Um, but they would keep distracting, saying, "Oh, labor, labor will will not allow the country to work. Labor are terrible for all these these reasons because they always turn it into a culture war issue. It's what the conservatives fucking do all the time." On okay. is is just so that people understand that this is not going to help them. Freedom of speech is not going to help you pay your bills. It's not going to put food on the table. It's not going to feed exactly. your kids. But it allows you to make the argument that you're making. Doesn't matter. You your material conditions will never be affected by being able to go on a right-wing news broadcast. Oh, doesn't but that's matter. All important. I'm here to do is to draw attention to the fact that this, what you do, is... Yes, is, but that it, is freedom it, of speech. It's so it's, it's really just, important you, to you, defend you, pre freedom of speech freedom, and protect it. Your freedom of speech, all you do is you use your platform. And I can't believe you do this. Like, you were born into a life of privilege, Jacob. No, and you decided to, to be a con man, to lie to people that, who trust I use you. my platform so that people like you have freedom of speech too, because I, I think it's really you. important... I don't need you to defend you. It is 100% it is true as well. Like He never had any need to go into politics. He chose to go in and then con people into like losing their rights. And to distract people while he, like, while he takes away their ability to protest or their ability to strike or their ability to bargain in their workplace, you know, you know what I mean, issues that will never affect him, he will, he will, bar he will go in and then he'll barefaced lie and say, no, that's not what I'm doing. 
I'm just defending free speech. It's such weaselly shite. Make your, make your I case. need you to be in a position of government. But the left don't you like this, do they? Stop. That's I why. Care. I'm not that's, that's I didn't realise I was on the left, left Jacob. That's why people are trying to stop. I didn't realise I was on the left. I just realised. I just realised. I just, I just realised it was a decent person, not some massive lefty. I just realised what you lot are doing in government is disgusting, and you lie and you lie, and you've got no contrition for what you've done to people. You're Brexit. Why do, do you care? Yeah. Well, people voted for Brexit. That's democracy. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, don't 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 mind that I lied about it for so long. Don't mind that I I con people. The fact is, the lie worked and people voted for it. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's okay. You know, don't don't talk about the the massive failure during COVID. No, no, no. It's fact. COVID's over. Don't worry. It's fine. It's fine. Don't worry. What's they do? You I'm think surprised you know, I didn't vote for Brexit. You think you know? You, you think you know better than the British people? I think you lied to people and they believed you. I think the you British people are more intelligent them. than that. The British people <laughs> weighed up Are you telling me they should have Are you telling me they should have known to know you were a liar? I wasn't a liar. So when you the, said the, to them, so when all, you said to them, all you're doing is mere abuse. You're not making any tell argument. Me, he doesn't now. Now he's in. Now he's in his element. He's not like he's making a claim. Uh, he's making a claim, and when she starts to respond to it, he's interrupting before she can respond to it, and then moving on to another point. You know. It's just it's just full of like uh, shitty debate lord stuff and logical fallacies, Martin Bailey's, all the all the shitty things that the conservatives are just so well trained for, you know. And she did very well, and she will do very well in a little while. But this stuff is just the bread and butter of conservative politics. I'm wrong. Okay, tell me I'm wrong. Let, oh, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait, make, make when some... you said to people you that Brexit was going to bring cheaper speak. food, it will. Clothes, will, uh, footwear, and drink. So it will. All when, this, all this when is Jacob, in progress. Joining the CTPPP, the uh, free trade deal with Australia, the free trade deal with New Zealand. All of these are bringing in lower tariffs on food I, coming into this I country. Ask, what do you this think, is already in the pipeline. What do you think is going to happen at the end of this year when those full Brexit checks are going to come into play? Do you remember the ones this time last year? You said were an act of self harm. Yes, and I stopped you them. them. That's okay, right. They're coming in this year. Well, there is no What's reason. What's going to happen then? There is no reason to bring those in. Those should be stopped again. They're coming and that in. Is with that's, the, that's the Brexit. The government can put, stop that. No, not at all. That is, is. That is. If the government wishes to put those controls on, that is an act of a democratic government. Do I think they're foolish? Yes, of course I do. That's why I tried you to stop them and succeeded in stopping them last year. I'm that not in government. I'm a member of the Conservative that Party. Is the yeah, you but why you know. is it that food inflation... Yeah. So, again, yeah, before she can, before she can fully respond... This is actually an interesting interview because I, I have looked on, the, on Twitter and I, I did find that a lot of Conservatives were like... Did they just sort of ignored some of it and were just like, yeah, he owned her. And there is like the middle part where he does just keep on interrupting, where it does come across like he's he's winning because he's, you know, using his normal slimy tactics. Um, but it's it's kind of a it, it is a good video like to talk about like why why are so few um journalists able to get this level of of dominating people? I mean, um Mick Lynch is another one who is extremely good at it. And the, the points that they come up with are always very good and very solid. Why are there so few journalists capable of doing this and holding uh, government the government to account? And, well, the media as well, but the, largely the government whenever they uh, interview them. It's higher mm -hmm. in the EU average than it is in the UK. We're Wait, doing better so why than the you, EU. Why didn't you compare us? Because I saw the other day you compared us to Austria. For inflation, great comparison there. Jacob. Which is a great comparison. Oh, wonderful! Why on Our earth? Our food inflation you, is lower than Germany. Why would you compare us to Austria, who are have the highest inflation, one of the highest uh, inflations in the world, and also their GDP is in the billions, ours is in the trillions. Why then food, would you? Our, our food inflation you, is lower than Germany. Why? So actually, I, I'm happy to take a variety of comparisons. Yeah, but he didn't. He picked Austria. <laughs> yeah, it's one of these ones where it's like, yeah, you, when you cherry pick data. And you like point it out like you were just cherry picking. You were picking it to be very specifically uh, make it look like you were doing well. And again, he just dodges again. Oh, I could have chose any of them. It just happened to be the one that makes us look good. And it happened to be the measure that you can twist into a way that it seems like we're not doing as bad as we are. You know, we're probably doing better than Ukraine are right now in terms of GDP as well. But uh, that uh, <laughs> that's, that's missing out some key information, I think. 
Why and Austria? Austria is renowned for its economic caution. There's a whole school of Austrian economists who are famous for economic caution. Why don't you compare us to other comparable countries in the G7? Tell, tell your viewers why our food costs are soaring and why they're going to continue to soar. Our food costs are rising by less than the average for the EU and less than by Germany. So okay. that's not too bad, is it? Uh, no, it's going up. Why do why are our energy bills the highest on the planet? And I just... Well, when I was in government, we made the biggest intervention to help people with their energy no, bills. Why, no, that's, that's not why I'm asking. The biggest intervention. Fuck off. You bailed out energy companies and you gave a measly, a tiny, a smidgen of the, the amount that they need to survive energy bills. And they didn't do anything to uh, like nationalize energy companies or to bring them into order so that like they're, they're I mean the energy company rise uh, was far far more um, in Britain the percentage wise for uh, the cost of, of, of energy companies than it was in every other country in Europe like there I, there's there's even a famous ad where I, I think it was uh, an EDF parody where um, they they talked about um how france's energy comp energy had only gone up five percent or something why are they the highest on the planet the the energy bills in the uk have mm -hmm. gone up because of our green policies the green policies of the conservative fuck off <laughs> they want to they want to introduce more fracking They've they've reduced subsidies for well I I I think they've reduced subsidies for uh, solar and green energy. Um, they they allow companies to pump raw sewage into our rivers far more to the point that there is not one river in the UK that now is like is below like pollution le levels. Like all the rivers are just flowing with shit now, thanks to this dickhead. Uh, oh, it's green policies. Yeah, it's fucking right. Sure. Okay, that has led to a very to significant do, increase. Nothing to do with the Conservative failures year after year it's after year. It's nothing to do with Brexit. Uh, no, I'm not blaming Brexit for that. No, actually. absolutely but nothing no, to do with actually, Brexit. But, no, but, but what, what, what was I trying you, to do? Jacob? I was trying to Did reduce you, prices by, yes, um, by fracking, people. by shale gas. Fracking. Oh, here we yep, go again. Right. Green policies like fracking and shale gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's just drill into the ground. Let's just like pump shite into the ground and cause more earthquakes and just cause all sorts of environmental destruction from uh, shale oil and fracking. Yeah, no, no, it's a green policy in, in that we use green tractors. We, we use green excavators. Uh, yeah, it's, that's what I mean by green policy. Fucking dick. Here we go. Using again. our resources. Fracking. Do you want to tell people how long it would take to get any sort of benefit from fracking and how teeny tiny that benefit would be and the fact that it would do absolutely oh, nothing? Oh, we're potentially to sitting on trillions of bills. cubic feet of gas un lying, underneath us. I'm in. not. There are very good you're geological lying. studies showing this. Do you, do you, do you, all you believe, say, do you believe your all lies? All you say when you disagree you is that somebody is lying. actually doing a lot but of work there, there baby. You've been proven time and time again. You never say, do you know what? I'm really sorry. I told you. That everything was going to be better you and cheaper, and it's you not. You disagree with me, but that's not the same as somebody lying. Disagreement. There's a there's a very big difference between a simple disagreement and a decade plus two years of evidence coming out about all this stuff. Evidence that austerity doesn't work. Evidence that the standard of living is going down. Child starvation is up. The waiting times in the NHS have gone up. It's not, and it's not just waiting times. It's just the amount of time to get an ambulance to your fucking door. You could be waiting hours after you have a heart attack when you call a, an ambulance and you just fucking die. You just die there, right? It's, it's, it's not a disagreement. It's the material conditions of our lives, He's he's saying oh it's just, he tries to like put this all down into saying it's just a disagreement when people are fucking dying by the hundreds of thousands of du during COVID and uh, with the NHS waiting list and this isn't even to speak of the amount of like the quality of life decrease that has come from these failures from the government you know like it's not just like the in the worst possible situation you might be fucked over because like the there's just no ambulances available but just like getting regular treatment from uh from a doctor has gotten worse you know 
and the the quality of food has gone down because we've been kicking uh we've been like rising the prices of, of imports so it means you can't get as good quality ingredients so you're just getting you're getting worse food you're going to die in the cases where you have an emergency um th this these are not disagreements these are facts that have been plaguing our country for 12 years now thanks to the conservatives and this is what i was saying earlier their only recourse is to turn to culture war bullshit it's to distract it's to try and blame anything but their own policies like it's to to blame immigration to blame trans people to blame you know oh poor people just don't want to work they're stealing money um on the dole is what the real reason is uh also the, all these companies who have been avoiding tax, we're not going to go after them uh, in spite of the billions that we could make from it. Um, it's just, it's it's such nonsense. And the the only recourse people have is to just wait for uh, the the wait for them to call an election, which they're not going to do. They're going to leave it to the last minute because, of course, they want to keep fucking you over for the next few years. And it's not. <laughs> and then to have all of that go on. And him go on and like a fucking blind mule, say, put that down to it's a disagreement. Just shows you just the level of comfort and smugness that conservatives have in their positions. It doesn't matter if you think of them as absolute trash. It doesn't matter if like... It doesn't matter what you think of them and the amount of destruction they have caused. There is no consequence to them for causing that destruction. Even if they get voted out, even if they leave, they, they will never real. suffer the consequences of, the, of what they have done. Do you see what I mean? There's no criminal prosecution waiting for them. There is no... There is no consequence. There is nothing that will stop it. And they can just act with impunity. The worst that can happen to them is people think that they're dickheads, which they do. They've experienced that for a long time and they're pretty well used to it. Um, and so the, like they, it's their ability to just step back from this, it just it makes me just you need to join you you need to get active and you need to do things that will genuinely threaten what they care about. What they care about is your labor they care about using your labor in order to make them money so withhold it take it back just say you know what we're striking we're not going to work until we get equal conditions and then suddenly they will start to give a shit because the people who pay the conservative party will stop making money the pipeline will stop flowing and suddenly someone will put a boot up their ass to get them to do something about it and while the while workers are are blocking labor from being done then they have negotiating power. And that's the only way that you'll be able to stop arseholes like this from just being a smug dick until the day that he dies. Um, yeah. If you promise I, something, if you promise something that doesn't materialise, that's a lie. What I promised about tariffs on food is true. They are being reduced with the free trade agreements that we've been negotiating. Should we revisit and that really at the important. end of this year when your, your, your act all, of self-harm comes into play? Well, that would be madness if the government does that, and I shall oppose that very strongly. This is, OK, let's go. Let's so, go. So, why don't we, uh, we, why, why would about, the let's government... Let's go back to woke, right, because this is... We, this is like, this is such a, a stupid thing. It's like, well, you know, I caused the car crash, but I'm saying that they should get the victim out of the car now. So actually, I'm not a bad person anymore. I'm the good one. I I had nothing to do with Brexit. I was not involved with it. But now I'm saying the effects of Brexit, I want to stop them. So don't think about what I've done. It's the fucking hot dog guy. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, who could have done this? I don't know what's going on. I want to talk about woke culture wars. I read your um, fascinating article with Frost in The Telegraph. That's a great person to partner with, by the way. It is. He's a very great man. Very yeah, distinguished responsible figure. For responsible, responsible, wise, shoddy, good. Shoddy deal that now no one likes, by the way. No one's happy with this. No, he did, he did, so well done. Great partner. He got choice. out of the European Union. He did a good negotiation uh, with literally the Literally no one is happy with this. Brexiteers are not happy with this deal. <laughs> well, I don't think that's right. Okay. I think the Brexiteers are article, very happy that we're out of the European article, Union. In this article, you talked about how anti-woke policies are going to uh, help recover the country. Whiteley is recovering, right? Your, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> good point. Good point. But Jacob Rees-Mogg's skill is that he sounds posh, right? 
That's all it really comes down to. That's why he is worth so much to the Conservatives. He is such a valuable tool in the culture war. People who are fooled by Jacob Rees-Mogg, they hear the, the posh accent, the quirky thing, and they think, oh, there's a guy who knows what he's talking about. Because for uh, you know your entire life, you've had it coded into you that posh accent equals smart. Posh accent equals knows what they're talking about. So now when some dick dingus idiot comes along with a posh accent you are fooled into thinking he knows what he's talking about then he and he has any intelligence about how to solve the problems of our nation um the, it's that is entirely what it is that's all of his value it's all he has um if he didn't have the posh accent it would he would be nothing if he didn't wear the suit he would be nothing all he's doing is like many conservatives playing the character of someone who knows what's going on and doing it for their whole career and all the while completely screwing you over while pretending like they're not screwing you over it's all that they do all conservatives now how are your anti-work policies going to help restore the economy for example explain it explain well, we it. want supply side reform we want the economy to get to higher levels of growth and this how is your really -woke this is really important do we don't want people distracted Please explain by it. all We've the work only a small amount of time well as we were discussing earlier the 140000 pounds small amount of money in itself being wasted by the cabinet office that's part of the point. Yeah, but that's Sorry, simply, are we talking about fixing the economy? Uh, and you've just quoted no, 140,000 I'm talking about things that are symptomatic pounds. of the problems okay. of the I, waste can I just, again, within, can I explain to your within the government. When, when Jacob talks about... <laughs> yeah. Uh, basically, what he's saying is, oh, anti-work policies... They're, they're essentially saying, oh, we're going to trim the grass before we root out the weeds. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, the, the grass isn't the fucking problem, mate. And even if it was like anti walk it's it's just it's just a culture war issue. It's just a distraction. Uh, deregulation. Well, that's a big thing. You're all about deregulation. What Jacob is talking about is scaling back your workers' rights and consumer I'm rights. I'm afraid so we're going to have to draw this to a conclusion. Oh, but you're shame. wrong on that because oh, our really? employment that's... rights all predate the European this Union didn't even want by wage. and large. In 2011, uh, but unfortunately, wage. we've got to go straight to the weather. We've that's overrun. But the sun will no doubt be shining in Somerset. Um, and it'll be a special Don't nice weather, time, weather there. Please. But o over, over to the weather, and thank you so much oh, uh, to my guest for joining me again. this evening. <laughs> Hello again, it's Aidan McGivern. <laughs> there we go, there we go. Jacob Rees-Mogg getting absolutely crushed. <laughs>